This will be a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Test goes good luck. So Oscar De La Hoya looking to the ceiling of this Thomas and Mack building rather than look at Ike Corte. The scene is set. There's tension in the air. Go, set go. to fight for the first time in 16 months against Oscar De La Hoya. This crowd unquestionably and unabashedly is an Oscar De La Hoya crowd. We're in the western part of the United States. They have trekked here from California and other parts west. And Ike Corte comes out blazing with the left hand and trying to establish his jab. Ike Corte, a man that many, many welterweights said often, you don't want to fight. Oscar De La Hoya is fighting. Both men have indicated the jab is a very important weapon early. Now there's De La Hoya shooting a right over that jab of Corte. That's certainly something they want to do. De La Hoya notoriously a cautious starter in fights. He likes to see what his opponent has. It's a big ring. Some believe that will help De La Hoya, who in theory wants to move a lot more, though right now he's more of a stationary target in front of Ike Corte. What about the ring rust for Corte? Are these early rounds dangerous for him? Will he be sharp after such a long layup? He's standing very straight up, Corte is and got whacked with the left hook right from the beginning by De La Hoya. Here comes De La Hoya coming after him. And every single punch he throws bring, brings a cheer from this crowd. Corte goes with a right hand and a left hook that misses. Corte normally has a very good defense a shell-like defense against the jab. He's opening himself up a little bit more, though, early in this fight. There, that's the kind of defense you normally see from Cortez. Both men intent on getting that jab started. Already, you can feel the intensity in this fight in round one. About a minute left to go here in round one. And if it's not Hagler Hearns like in its number of punches and big punches, there is a lot of intensity in that ring, and you can feel both fighters looking to make things happen. Left hook gets in by Corte. It's almost as if people are holding their breath, waiting for the first big punch. Corte smiles as De La Hoya whacks him to the body. Corte, though, very adept at blocking punches like that. Obakar boxed that way against Corte, but couldn't land effectively. And Corte comes out of that shell usually with good offense. See, nothing landing there by De La Hoya. That's the great defense of Corte. A very, very close first round. Un poquito Oscar, más laterales, side to side. Okay. A little bit more, side to side, and you're gonna be first with a jab. Stay, stay more busy with a jab. And keep and keep him outside. Okay? Don't let him in. Keep him outside. Side to side. And stay busy with a jab. Be first more call jab can jab. Yes, one look right that is. Can't one can jab. Oh no. Not when I call can't watch more call from right there. If you attempt to go left to get up, four, can swing over, say, oh, no, 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 Corte often will go into that shell defense and fighters reel off combinations as De La Hoya did, but very few of them really land. However, I thought De La Hoya had a slight edge in round one. But again, it was a very close round, and Corte, you, you must know, does not believe that he can win a decision here. 
He looked at the Whitaker fight in which Whitaker lost by six points on two judges scorecards in a fight that many believed he won. And he feels that he's just not going to get that kind of, get a break here. And so he feels he needs a knockout to win. Corte going with the hook. Both men exchanging jabs. Corte really intent on getting his off, as is De La Hoya. Misses with the right, does Corte, and De La Hoya misses with his own right. Their plan was to have Corte box to the body more. He has not thrown too many body punches yet to De La Hoya's torso. They want more side-to-side -side movement from De La Hoya. Now he's starting to do it. And there's Cortez Jeff. He's starting to find the range with that punch. He's 29-year-old former champion. Loosening up and has not shown a lot of ring rust here. He has, I think, been more mobile and loose than maybe you might expect after a 16-month layoff. Pretty good beginning to round two for Ike Corte. The crowd getting into it, urging Oscar De La Hoya on. De La Hoya with a counter right. De La Hoya is finding out what other people have already found out. Ike Corte is not that easy to hit. He may look like a mechanical fighter, but he isn't that much. There's Corte slipping the De La Hoya jab. Good jab by Corte. And by and large, his jab has been more effective here in the second round. Good right hand to the head of Oscar De La Hoya. Corte takes a left hook, but covers up. And covers up again and smiles at De La Hoya and says, come on. And an exchange by both fighters. Big left hook by Corte. By Corte and De La Hoya go mano y mano in round two. By Corte has himself a second round and there's a hint of blood from the nose of Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya was right. This is the toughest fighter he's ever faced. There's a good right hand by Oscar De La Hoya. He misses with the hook. But Ike Corte had himself some moments in that round. Trust me. Two rounds are in the book, and it is several things are obvious. Ike Corte is unawed by the situation and unawed by Oscar De La Hoya, and something else is obvious. He came here to fight. We head into round three, the schedule for 12. The WBC welterweight title is on the line. De La Hoya backing up by Corte pushing ahead. So far, Corte does not look rusty. He's actually looked pretty sharp in this bout. And you have to think it will only get better for him in terms of sharpness as he gets some rounds under his belt. There's the defense of Ike Corte. It is a good one. There's a drumbeat in this building from his Ghana supporters. Corte jabbing to the body. So far, the Corte jab has been as advertised. Pretty good. The crowd chanting Oscar's name. Good hook by De La Hoya. 
Not a lot of lateral movements from Delahoya. Just kind of inching backwards. A hook and a right hand don't quite get there for Delahoya. Again, Delahoya with a counter left and misses, but a good right hand by Delahoya. A left and a left to the body by Oscar Delahoya. You can see the hand speed of Delahoya. Both men measuring every move and every punch as if the fight was riding on it. Maybe it is. Delahoy trying to counter with the left hook every time Corte throws his jab or the right hand. Neither man has been jabbing that effectively here in this round. Right to the body by Corte. Delahoy obviously looking to counter punch here. Delahoya very economical with his punches, and will that mean that he gave this round away? Big hook by Corte and another hook. Down. We headed to round four, and if the early rounds were supposed to be dangerous for Ike Corte, they have not been. Good hook by Corte to the body. The Corte people said, don't judge him by the Jose Luis Lopez fight. He was sick, but he claims he had malaria. They only acknowledge he was sick. They say he should have pulled out of the fight. He didn't, was a shell of himself in that fight and still managed to get a draw. And many people thought he won. They said this version of Ike Corte will be much, much better. And guess what? They were right about this. The other thing about Corte that's striking is he has been a very fluid boxer in there. Not so one-dimensional, not so mechanical. Good upper body movement. If anything, he's been more fluid than De La Hoya. De La Hoya has looked a little more mechanical than him. De La Hoya unable to get off first. It's been really Corte getting off first. We're in round four, it is scheduled for 12. Oscar De La Hoya, very economical with his punches. He is not throwing them. Corte sticking the jab out. De La Hoya pawing with his jab. He has not landed that punch much at all, De La Hoya, since the first round. Right hand blocked by Delahoy. There's a good jab by Delahoy, probably his best in the last couple of rounds. Right hand gets into the head of Corte. This round is there for the taking. pushing the jabs out there, but both men being very, very careful and very tentative here in round four. De La Hoya tasted two big left hooks from Corte in the last round with 20 seconds left. Whose round is this? Could be anyone's. to the fifth in what looks to be a very close fight. De La Hoya in the sixth defense of his WBC welterweight title. Forte, a former WBA champ. They want more combination punching from De La Hoya. He's been very inactive in these rounds. 
More fainting from both fighters, too. Well, you see a faint from Corte. It's been a fight fought at long range. Mitch Halpern has hardly had to break the two at all. Maybe one or two clinches in this spot, if that. Both men at long range pot shot him. Wild left hook from the outside by De La Hoya. And hooked by Corte. Corte's jab has been just a little sharper throughout most of this fight than, than De La Hoya's. That's a hit, that's a hit, oh, that's a hit, come on. Corte smiling at De La Hoya. It has really evolved into a chess match halfway through round five. De La Hoya has been extremely inactive in this round. I mean, he has thrown very few punches and has missed with just about everything he has thrown. Corte hasn't been that much more effective, but he has been throwing more often and has landed a few. Corte trying to land the right to the body. No counter punch there from De La Hoya, and Corte was wide open for a counter left hook. Mike Corte showing he is a poised and effective veteran right now. They exchange. Corte gets the left hook in. Right hand by Corte, and this may be a round Ike Corte has stolen just because he's punching more, and De La Hoya has done so little. When will Oscar De La Hoya begin to throw any of those combinations that they're calling for in his corner? Ten seconds left, who will try and steal this round? Corte misses with the right hand. That'll do it for round five. It's a very much a chess match. They exchange left hooks. Will it heat up? There were some intense moments. Oh, big left hook sends Corte down. Oscar De La Hoya lands the left hook and sends Corte down. I don't know if Corte is hurt as much as off balance. Let's see. Exchange left hooks. De La Hoya got the worst of it. This time it was Corte who opened himself up. Big right by Corte. Right and left by De La Hoya, but Corte comes back with his own. They rumble in the corner. It's not a chess match anymore. Is De La Hoya hurt? I think so. He's holding. De La Hoya looks a little rocky. Mitch Halpern took a lot of time to warn Ike Corte about something. What? I don't know. to say that warning gave Oscar De La Hoya a little time to recoup. De La Hoya opening himself up again. Nice jab by Corte. It has heated up here in round six. De La Hoya landed that left, took the set. Oh my, nice right hand by Corte. De La Hoya got very brave after he landed that left hook to Corte, but he opened himself up for the next left hook. Now De La Hoya comes back with his jabs. Under a minute left to go. Both men have been down here in the sixth. 
swelling around the left eye of De La Hoya. It's Forte pressing forward. Those punches were all blocked by De La Hoya, or by Corte. Well, who do you like in this round? Both men were knocked down, but Corte seemed to land the bigger punches and seemed to land more of them. And the Corte jab keeps going. Here's where De La Hoya was sent by Corte down as they exchanged left hooks. De La Hoya off, or Corte off balance, got hit with the left hook, but turn around is fair play. There was a left hook by Corte, sending De La Hoya down right on the chin. And after that, Corte was able to follow up with some pretty good shots. So Mark Round six down is a big one. This crowd is on its feet cheering. Who was hurt more in round six? That's the question. Some swelling underneath the left eye of De La Hoya. Mitch Halpern wants some of the grease rubbed off of Oscar De La Hoya's face. And they come out for round seven. Well, if Ike Corte suffered anything from his 16-month layoff, it's not evident to any of us. He's fighting an excellent fight. Warning to De La Hoya for low blows. It has actually become a battle of left hooks. Corte has done a little better job, I think, with his jab in this fight. And that may be the key, so far at least. His jab is keeping De La Hoya off balance, even when it's not landing. In round seven, it's scheduled for 12. A little over a minute into round seven. Many believe this would go a long way, this fight, and it's showing signs that it, it will. Mike Corte is picking up the beat. He is loose. He is focused. He's making this fight right now. None of the side to side from De La Hoya that we all thought we would see from him. He's very much a stationary target in front of Mike Corte, and that is playing into Corte's hands. One of the things that gives Corte a little trouble is lateral movement. And in this round, Oscar De La Hoya is throwing nothing. He has thrown very few punches and has landed practically nothing. Right hand gets in for De La Hoya. That was blocked. This round is sitting there to be taken. De La Hoya misses with the right to the body. Under a half minute left to go in round seven. No man has taken clear cut control of this round, but Corte has certainly thrown more punches. Big right by Corte, and a left by Corte. Both men looking for the bomb. We head into round eight. 
It is scheduled for 12. And if people came into this fight thinking that Ike Corte would be the more mechanical of the two fighters, in truth, it's Oscar De La Hoya, who, as Gil Clancy said in between the corners, you're fighting like your feet are in mud. You have better feet than the other guy. Use them, better legs. But De La Hoya is showing no movement. It's almost as if Oscar De La Hoya is so tense and so tight for this fight that he can't get into a fluid movement. And if you stand right in front of Ike Corte, you're asking for trouble because he, he can get you with the jab and the left hooks and the right hands. One part of Corte's arsenal that he hasn't been able to use that he wanted to was body shots, but he's been effective in other areas, and there's the jab again. There has been no combination punching from Oscar De La Hoya. There, at least, he faints and moves his head. De is negating his height and reach advantage by getting so low. Right hand by Corte. De La Hoya keeping his hands low. Corte is three inches shorter than De La Hoya and has two inches less reach. It looks the other way around. The De La Hoya jab is non-existent. Mike Corte is in total control right now of this match. And if he's not dominating De La Hoya, which is a good right by De La Hoya, it doesn't move Corte. Good hook underneath by De La Hoya. Under a minute left to go, 43 seconds. De La Hoya has been so economical with his punches. Can you win throwing this few amount of punches? The answer would seem to be no, but you never know. Corte continues to use the jab, and even when it doesn't land, it disrupts De La Hoya's offense. Good jab by De La Hoya. Sends Corte backward. Here comes De La Hoya, but he walks into a right to the body. 12 seconds left in this round. Oh, don't push, don't push. Step back, watch the heads, come on. So little in this bout. These, of course, are pretty close rounds, but I think most of them are going to Ike Corte, and we'll have to see what the judges say. In a way, this fight is reminiscent of the Pernell Whitaker, Oscar De La Hoya fight, where De La Hoya seemed out of sync, but apparently did just enough in rounds to win the rounds, at least on the judges' scorecard. Good right hand by De La Hoya. If De La Hoya needs a blueprint to what he should do, he could look at that replay from the last round or relive it in his mind. Double jab and a straight right hand that it was able to get through the defense of Corte. In truth, it hasn't been a scintillating effort by either fighter. Corte's been better. There's what they want from De La Hoya. Even if those are blocked, it's going to score in the judges' minds. That's what Gil Clancy was telling him to do, but part of the reason he doesn't throw those is because Corte comes out of that defensive shell and rocks him sometimes. Better beginning to this round, certainly for Oscar De La Hoya, the defending WBC welterweight champion in his sixth title defense, hoping it's not his last. De La Hoya being more aggressive. Wide punches, though, from De La Hoya. And there's Corte with the jab. Corte gets there with the left hook. That pesky jab of Corte is keeping Oscar De La Hoya at bay. And look how crouched De La Hoya is. Fighting more crouched than I've seen him against a shorter opponent. And the jab of Corte keeps on coming. Wow! A big right hand by 
Forte. Another one. They exchange it out. Delahoya gets a right hand in. And if you're looking for a difference in this fight, it's the jab of Corte, which is constant. De La Hoya misses with three wild left hooks. And here comes Corte with the jab and a big right hand. Here is Oscar De La Hoya throwing some of those flashy combinations. Couple of those punches got in. And it will impress the judges. What a freight train right hand by Ike Corte. Seconds out. Right down the pike. Give Oscar De La Hoya credit for staying up. And then another one landed after that. We head into round 10. 29-year-old Ike Corte, 26-year-old Oscar De La Hoya in a welterweight battle that is turning into what we thought it would be, something approaching a classic struggle. How are the judges seeing this? Many close, oh boy, left hand hurts Corte. It was a jab from De La Hoya, or was he just off balance? And look how De La Hoya is loath to try and take advantage of that. The difference in this bout is the Corte jab. He established, he worked harder establishing it early in the fight. He won the battle of the jabs early. And Corte has kind of, or De La Hoya gave up on his jab during portions of this fight. Almost halfway through round 10. The mouse under De La Hoya's left eye is getting bigger. De La Hoya has had his moments in this round though. Nice right by Corte. De La Hoya wide with his punches. Boy, he is throwing that left hook in a wide fashion. And the defense of Mike Corte, which I and the other people who know him have talked about being good, is excellent. He's not an easy man to hit. There's the double jab of Ike Corte. De La Hoya still very loath to throw that left jab. Corte misses with the counter left. Good left hand to the body by De La Hoya. He has had a better 10th round, by and large. Well, you see Corte just looking to nail that in with that right hand again. De La Hoya throwing wide punches. But some of them got there in that exchange. De La Hoya throws the left hook and lands it. Corte gets away from those shots. Round 10, a better one for Oscar De La Hoya. Maybe one he won. The face of Ike Corte and Oscar De La Hoya as we head into the 11th round. Corte comes out throwing the jab as he has throughout this fight. Now there's De La Hoya. Good jabs by De La Hoya, and that gets him in. If there's one serious strategic flaw in this fight, it's that Oscar De La Hoya has not thrown the jab enough or efficiently. That last round was a good one for Oscar De La Hoya. Can he build on it in these last couple rounds? And where is he on the scorecards? I believe Ike Corte is ahead in this match, but that is very unofficial. And many of the rounds have been close. 
Boy, wide punches by De La Hoya, but Forte now not able to really take advantage of that. But now, in a subtle change, it's De La Hoya who's really throwing more punches than Forte. Mike Forte has slowed down, slowed down a little bit. been 12 rounds four times, twice for Quarte, so they know this distance. It has not been a fight filled with dazzling combinations or lots of wild exchanges, but it has had its dramatic moments, like the sixth round when both men were sent down by left hooks, and the ends of several rounds when there have been wild exchanges. This a very tough round to judge. Neither man really landing very effectively. Delahoya pressing forward. Corte actually the one pushing the punches out there. Good right and left. Left by De La Hoya, not much landing there, but that flashiness could impress the judges. And he has been more active in the 11th round. Mike Corte can ill afford to let down in the last two rounds, and maybe he has already in this 11th. He doesn't believe he can win a decision against Oscar De La Hoya, and if he doesn't believe it, he better go out and go after him and make it happen. He has let De La Hoya take the play away from him a little bit in these last two rounds, even though they haven't been dominant rounds. So it goes into the 12th and final round. Many thought it would get here. Ike Corte and Oscar De La Hoya going after it now, and this fight could very well be on the line. I believe, oh, there goes Corte from the left hook. what gets Oscar De La Hoya over the hump. Can he make this a two-point round? He knocked Corte down once before, then got careless and got knocked down himself. He's going after Corte. Is that a good strategy? Corte getting nailed on the ropes. De La Hoya throwing caution to the wind. Will he walks into a hook, does De La Hoya. Big hook by De La Hoya. Halpern looking carefully. He better not stop it too soon. Cortez in trouble on the ropes. Big hook. Halpern is being very patient. Cortez can't get off those ropes. Cortez slapping. He throws a right. De La Hoya's punched out. De La Hoya's punched out. Can Cortez come? Allowing this fight to go on. Here comes Corte. De La Hoya looks spent. His hands are low. Corte has hardly any energy to go after him. They are walking in slow motion. The next big punch could send somebody down. In a dramatic 12th round, that might be enough for Oscar De La Hoya to pull this one out. Dino Duva, the promoter for Corte, is waving his man on, desperately hoping he can get there. Mike Corte showed grit and determination in hanging in there. 
how did he stay up? Delahoya landed hook after hook. Can you say the word rematch? The final seconds of what turned out to be a very, very interesting and entertaining fight. And boy, it will be an interesting decision. A two-point round. A two-point round for Oscar De La Hoya in the 12th round. Was that enough to give him the victory? Both men are on the shoulders of their handlers. You can make a case for either man. I thought that Ike Corte might have eked out a victory by a point, but the last two-point round by Oscar De La Hoya could put it in his favor. And it certainly would not be out of the question to see a draw. Here is the knockdown by De La Hoya. Down goes Corte. And then De La Hoya was able to pin him on the ropes. This is the knockdown. And just as damaging was later in the round when Corte was pinned against the ropes and De La Hoya came very close to ending this fight. Kudos to Mitch Halperin, the referee, for not stopping it at this point. He did not panic. He did not jump in. Corte was throwing punches back, even though he wasn't effective. And Mitch Halperin showed the patience to let this fight go on. And Ike Corte was even able to nail Oscar De La Hoya with right hands like that one to almost turn the tide a little bit. What are the margins if there is a victory one way or the other? Many people criticize. Well, here's, Oscar, here's Michael gentlemen, Buffer. Before we go to the Budweiser scorecards, how about a round of applause for the best welterweight fight seen in Las Vegas since Hearns and Leonard. We now go to the Budweiser scorecards. Larry O'Connell scores the bout, 115 to 114. He scores it for Corte. John Keane scores the bout, 116 to 113. He has it for De La Hoya. Ken Marita scores the bout, 116 to 112. For the winner by split decision, and still the undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. So Oscar De La Hoya wins again, wins a split decision victory over Ike Corte, and what makes this perhaps quite controversial is the fact that the margin of those victories really looks inappropriate. A 116 to 112 margin for the, on one of the judges' scorecards for De La Hoya, in all truth, is not appropriate. And the 116, 113 could be argued. 115, 114, of course, is the margin of victory that Corte had. We are being showered here at the ringside with Valentines. To the strains of my funny Valentine. I don't think that Ike Quarte is in a Valentine's Day mood at all. You take a look at the right hand Quarte was able to land in a couple of those instances in the earlier rounds, and now in round 12. That was Oscar De La Hoya sending Quarte down. And there is the ending of the fight near the end where Oscar De La Hoya landed some big punches against Ike Corte. Mitch Halpern rightfully did not stop the fight. De La Hoya had himself a huge 12th round, at least a two-point round. And apparently, on two of the judges' scorecards, he didn't need it to win the fight because he won at 116-113 and 116-112 on two of the judges' scorecards. And I dare say that if there is a controversy about this win, there you see 
Keen and Morita both voted for De La Hoya and voted for him decisively. It's almost unfathomable to me to see a 116-112 score, but considering how well Corte was doing in those early and mid rounds. Granted, there was a two-point round at the at the end, but uh, Pat Morita to score at 116 to 112. Here's Larry Merchant with Delahoya. Oh, well, I called it from the beginning. I mean, this guy's a very uh, good warrior. I mean, I give him all the credit in the world because I gave him some punches the last round that he wouldn't go down. What surprised you about him? Was it his ability to box better than you thought? Tell us. I think I underestimated his boxing ability. Um, when I would try to rush him, I thought he would stay forward and fight me, but um, he did move some uh, lateral movements, some waist movements. He's a very good fighter. I give him a lot of credit. All right. In this, in this sixth round, you knocked him down. It appeared you were coming on. Did you get a little anxious and walk into a punch? Um, I got a little anxious, yes. I mean, this guy, uh, this guy was a very dangerous fighter. I mean, uh, I was looking for his left jab, his left hook. Came back with the right hand I mean, and caught me clean. And uh, before we finish, Larry, un saludo a todos, gracias por todo el apoyo. A Ignacio Ramirez, a Durango, a todos mis paisas, gracias por todo el apoyo. A Big Bear, a todos en en Cabo San Lucas, un saludo, un beso, un abrazo. All right, now provide your own translation. <laughs> I just said I just want to thank everybody out there and uh, thank you for all the support and uh, happy Valentine's. In the second half of the fight, for long spells, Oscar, you weren't doing much. You were going after him, going after him. In your corner, they were urging you to do something, yeah. at least to impress the judges. Right. Well, what happened there? Um, I was a little worried of his uh, punching power. This guy uh, is a very powerful hitter, and um, I know I have to... Uh, it's a big learning lesson because I have to train harder, be more prepared, be aware, not, not, never underestimate my opponents, and uh, this guy's a very tough, tough, worthy opponent. When you went out for the last round, did you think you had to do something dramatic to win the fight? Not dramatic, because... Uh, I knew all along that he was, uh, nobody was really putting the pressure. Um, I was finishing the rounds pretty good. Um, he wasn't uh, connecting me with the goals, those good jabs that he has, but uh, it was just uh, a very uh, it's, it's, intimidating fight for me. But you certainly understood or, or conveyed the idea that there was some great urgency when you out, went out in the 12th oh, round. Of course, for the people, for the fans, for the public. They want to see good action-packed fights. I gave it to him the last round. I dropped him. I almost knocked him out. I had him. Oh my gosh! I'm very. Did you upset get arm? With Did you get arm weary? Because he he was hurt, obviously, but he stood in with you, kept throwing punches. No, this guy can take a punch. This guy's a, a real strong hitter. Can take a punch, and I give him all the credit in the world. Finally, this. There's a rematch clause in your contract in case he won. But this was such a great fight, and so many people got pleasure out of it. Do you want to give the public a rematch of this fight? I don't know. You think it was a great fight, Larry? I don't think so. I don't really think so. There's better and bigger, better fights out there for me. I know that. More exciting fights that the people want to watch. Basically, you're saying you don't want to fight him again. I'll fight him any time. I mean, uh, you know, as long as the contract is uh, is good, the date, the the weight, everything, the people want to watch it again. Uh, I think people want to watch more exciting fights. Uh, I Corte, uh, uh, sometimes he did fight, sometimes he didn't. But, uh, hey, that's his style. That's my style. And uh, we gave you this fight tonight. Thank you very much for an outstanding fight, Oscar De La Hoya.